Good morning and welcome to BC 110 course on identity where we look into how we have been identified in Christ week after week. Even before we could start our session, request one of us to please lead us in prayer. Anyone from online or from on campus, request you all to lead us in prayer. Prince, would you like to pray? Jesus, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, uh, for this day, Lord. Uh, thank you for this time, Lord. Uh, and thank you for giving this time, Lord, uh, to come together and uh, to listen to your word and uh, to listen uh, to your teachings, Lord Father. And as we go through the class, Lord Father, we ask you, Lord, to reveal uh, more about you and to reveal more of our identity, who we are in you, and Lord Father, and help us to walk in the true identity that you have called us and that you have given us lord father open our minds and open our hearts lord to understand and uh, walk in the truth that you have uh, set for us lord father to you we submit everything in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you prince so last class what did we look into what did we learn from our last class we are the ministers and we are the ambassadors in Christ Jesus. This is what he says, uh, that you are the representative, you are the governor, you are the diplomat, you are representing Christ. So each of us, when we are in Christ, we are the ambassadors in Christ. At APC, this is what we believe, that every believer is a minister of Christ. Every believer is a minister. We are called to be the leader. We are called to carry the gospel. We are called to be the ambassadors of Christ in ambassadors of Christ. So here we are to know and understand and identify ourselves as that minister, as that leader, as that ambassador in Christ Jesus. So this is what it says in the Greek word. In Greek, ambassador literally translates as a senior representative a senior representative a governor a general it also means a diplomat a higher official so you and i are the representative of the most high god we need to remember this we need to identify ourselves that we are just not an ordinary leader but a minister of God. So when we identify ourselves as a minister of God, everything changes. Our thought process changes. The way we lead ourselves changes. We don't focus on ourselves. We shift the focus from ourselves to Christ. Though we may be nothing in physical, we may be weak, unskilled, untalented. But here the Lord is saying, when you identify yourself in me, you see yourself grow in much skilled position. You see the, the talent, the skill that flows in and through you. So what is in Christ is now become in us why because we are in him we are abiding in him and he in us this is what in john 15 we studied saying that when we abide in christ and christ abides in us we bear much fruit why we bear much fruit because we are not setting the focus on ourselves we are setting the focus on the most high god we are getting ourselves rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. The tree that grows near the rivers of water bears much fruit. The leaves will not wither, but then it is green throughout the season. Similar manner, you and I, when we are rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus, you see ourselves grow more in Him. In all the area, in every area, we grow more in Christ likeness. So we represent Christ faithfully. We represent Christ faithfully. 
we identify ourselves in him because we are in Christ Jesus. So when it comes, when we identify ourselves in Christ Jesus, we should also be ready to take part in Christ in every area. Yes, we are abiding in it. We are going to bear much fruit. But at the same time, there is another side that is the suffering side of Christ. What does the scripture says? Scripture says, until and unless a wheat has been dead to itself, it cannot bear much fruit. For us to be more fruitful, we need to die in Christ. We need to suffer. Because Christ suffered. So as an ambassador, if and when we suffer or make certain sacrifice unto the call of God, we see ourselves that we are in Christ. So how do we endure the suffering? How do we uh, endure the sacrifice? Because we, when we abide in Christ, we are been strengthened in Him. That's what the scripture says. When you're weak, then you're strong. You draw, I mean, we draw our strength from Christ himself. From Christ himself. So this is what happens when we abide, when we get ourselves connected in Christ, we draw the grace that is required for us to endure the hardship that comes our pathway. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. But then intentionally, when we look up to him, when we set our focus on Christ, it becomes easy. Why? Because God gives us grace. This is what God promised to all his disciples in their path, in their walk, in their journey with Christ. Was it very easy for all the apostles and the disciples? Did they face the hardship? But did they receive the grace that God promised? They did. In a similar manner, God says that I am with you. My grace is sufficient for you to handle every situation in your life. Every situation. So as we also looked in the wisdom of God, we have the wisdom of God in Christ Jesus. So as God gives us, as God enriches us with his wisdom, the similar way God pours out his grace upon us that we may endure every suffering that we come across in our journey with Christ Jesus. This is what he says in Philippians chapter 1 verse 13. Can I request you all to turn to Philippians chapter 1 verse 13? Can I request one of you all to please read? As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole place, God and to everyone else, that I am, I am in chain for Christ. Okay, so Philippians chapter 1 verse 13 says, so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ Jesus. So what is Paul trying to say in the letter to Philippians? He's saying, right now, Apostle Paul is in the prison. Apostle Paul is in the prison and it has become evident to everyone the officials, the people around him, and to the palace guards, and to all that Apostle Paul is in, in the prison. But then what he says, that my chains are in Christ, that I'm not in the prison, I'm not in the chains of a government official, but I'm in the chains of Christ Jesus. So Apostle Paul is making it very clear, despite the situation that he's in the prison, Nothing can stop the work of God. Nothing can stop the work of God. So this is what he very clearly says, that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So whatever I do, I do it unto Christ. If I have the freedom 
to walk, I go share the gospel to everyone. I preach the gospel from one place to the other. Now, because I'm bound in prison, that does not mean that the sharing of the gospel ends there. So what he does, he starts to write. He starts to write. He writes letters to all the churches that he planted during the three missionary journey. And then people come to visit him. And here he's talking to them. He's still ministering to the people who come to visit him. It didn't stop there. You know, everywhere. Can you put the light inside the table and say, don't, don't, uh, yeah, don't shed out light, don't give light? If you're on a torch, the torch is on. And if you keep it underneath the table, will the light stop shining? Will the light stop shining? It will still shine. If you put it inside the box and lock it, will the light stop shining? You may not see the light outside, but inside the box, it is still shining. Yes. The same way, wherever you keep the light, it will shine. The same way, wherever Apostle Paul was, he continued to be the light of Christ. Even though he was in prison, he was writing letters. He was sharing gospel to the people who visited him. He was uh, sharing gospel, the love of Christ to all the gods who were there. So everywhere God placed Apostle Paul, he was the light. He was the salt of Christ Jesus. He was a true witness of Christ Jesus. So what happened? He lived a life and he set an example. Nothing could stop Apostle Paul from doing what God has called him. So in this way, he ministered to people with great boldness and strength. So people outside were watching at Apostle Paul, the believers, the leaders, were stirred up within them. Hey, we should be like Apostle Paul. Nothing stopping from him proclaiming or sharing the gospel, doing the work for Christ Jesus. So they had, they got this attitude with them, just like our Apostle Paul writes saying that, you know, as I imitate Christ, so he was. You also imitate me as I imitate Christ. So he's encouraging everyone with action. By, by living it as an example in his life. So the people around them are strengthened. They are like being encouraged by what Apostle Paul is doing. And so they are, they are growing in greater confidence and boldness because they saw Apostle Paul at great joy, even in mid of his trial. People witness that God would take care of Apostle Paul, even in such hardship and certain such circumstances. They also saw the hand of God upon him. They also saw the favor of God, that God was still using Apostle Paul even when he was in prison. You see, God was faithful. This is what the scripture says. The God who called you is faithful. He will accomplish the purpose that he has called you for. So we should carry the attitude of what God has, the attitude about us. God has the attitude of not giving up on each of us. How do we carry the same attitude? Because this is what Apostle Paul is carrying and reflecting. That God, no matter where I am, where my, no matter uh, um, you know, which situation or circumstances I have been placed in, but I will not give up on doing what you have called me to do. So class, today, are we carrying the same attitude in our life. Can we reflect on our life and check, do I have the same attitude what Apostle Paul had? Am I ready? Will any kind of suffering or will any kind of persecution stop me from what God wants me to do? We need to ask ourselves. We need to reflect on our own self. The purpose of God. We all have identified the call of God and the purpose of God, without which we may not be here. So as we have identified the call and purpose of God, check out our heart attitude. Are we carrying the attitude of not giving up? Because God is faithful and he will never give up. He is a God who keeps his promise. He has never failed before and he will never fail even now. 
is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we serve a God who's same, but we need to check ourselves. Am I ready, Lord, to endure the hardship, to endure the suffering? Can I have the same attitude that I have when everything is present and nice, I serve you? Can I have the same attitude when I endure the persecution and suffering? The anointing caused sacrifice. There are certain sacrifices that our call would ask us to cost. That we may have to endure it in our ministry, in our walk with God, in our journey. So let's look at, we are on page 112, 127, co-workers in Christ Jesus. Co-workers in Christ Jesus. So Paul recognized others who were serving, ministering, and working in the Lord. We need to know something here. How many times he mentions in the Lord and in the Christ Jesus in these verses. So I just read it for each of us. We'll turn to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. Verse 2 to 3, verse 7 to 13, and verse 22. So what is very important here? Apostle Paul, as he went on in these three missionary journeys, he planted different churches in the places where he visited. And there he raised certain leaders. And now, Apostle Paul being the leader, we see that how he respected and honored the co-workers in Christ Jesus in the way that God looks at them, in the way God would honor them. So this is the attitude that each of us as a leader, that we need to carry it within ourselves to respect and honor each of us because we should not look at each of us as an individual, but we need to look at each of us as co-workers in Christ, Christ Jesus, because we serve the Most High God. And here in Romans chapter 16, verse 2 to 3, we see how we address saints. We see that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints. In the manner worthy of the saints. And assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. See, when you are serving God, when each of us are serving God, we need to respect each, each of us. That we are the saints of Christ. We are the saints of God. Apostle Paul, being a great leader and apostle of Jesus Christ, here is writing and greeting and asking people to respect and honor each other because honoring for the leadership that God has called each one of them. Verse 3 says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow worker in Christ Jesus. See, there's no hierarchy. You know, everyone are in the same level ground. He's saying, greet Priscilla and Aquila because they are the fellow workers in Christ Jesus. Greet and Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. So you see that Apostle Paul is addressing each one in Christ. You see, he is honoring them. He is paying the due respect to each leader, saying that in Christ I honor them. In Christ they are my fellow worker. Greet Urbanus, verse 9, a fellow worker in Christ and statues, my beloved, verse 10. Greet appels approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my countryman. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and 
Tryphosa, who have labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved persons who labored much in the Lord. Verse 13, greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greet you in the Lord. So Apostle used some help to, uh, to transcribe whatever he's dictating to that person. So he's greeting even to that person who is writing. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21, he says, But that you also may know my affairs and how I'm doing. Tychicus, a beloved brother and a faithful minister in the Lord, will make all things known to you. See how he's honoring the leader? He's saying, faithful minister in the Lord. So he is not making a note here that every leader are reporting to me. He is giving the focus to God. You see, every leader is making sure that every leader are also aware that you are not accountable to me, but you are accountable to God. You are accountable to God. So when he puts the focus to all the leaders that you are accountable to God, now each of us are realizing, hey, listen, I am accountable to God. I need to lead my life, lead the ministry. Why? Because I am accountable to God. Can I hide from God? No. So I'm accountable to God. I'm accountable to the most high God. And because I'm accountable to the God, I get to do the things in the way it pleases God. At the same time, the leader who raised all these other leaders, respecting and greeting each one of them, though they may be new in the Lord, maybe a month or a year, no matter how many years or months or weeks that they are in the Lord serving in the ministry, Apostle Paul is giving them the equal honor and saying that we are on the same level ground. We all are fellow workers in Christ Jesus. We are co-workers in Christ Jesus. This is what the scripture says. We receive the same honor from God. The reward from God is equal to the man who sows the seed, who waters it, and who harvests it. So what does he mean to say? That when we serve the Lord, we are on the same level ground. We need to respect each other as we are in Christ Jesus. So there are other scriptures that we could look into. Even in the um, book of Philemon, chapter 1, verse 23, we see that how Apostle Paul addresses, he says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, greets you. With that, we will move on to the next section, page 113, 113, living the, living the in Christ life or living the life in Christ Jesus. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 18. Can I request one of you all to please read? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. We hold all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has recon reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you. Thank you, Nikhil. So we see here, because of the simple faith in Christ Jesus, God has done these wonderful things for us, where our life has been transformed where we have become new creation in Christ Jesus so what happened when we became new creation in Christ Jesus we have become union we have become one in Christ Jesus so that you know Christ has accomplished and completed everything once and for all on the cross that you and I don't have to do anything but in faith we have to receive him as a Lord and Savior so what happened when we received Jesus as a Lord and Savior we have been born again. We have been born from above. This is what in John chapter 3, verse 1 to 13 talks about. Verse 3 says, born again, which means we have been born new. We have been born from above. And verse 12 states that 
the things that are of the natural world, then they are the things about the spiritual heavenly world and the world from above. So Jesus had come down from heaven into this earthly body, and yet at the same time, he carried, he walked in the heavenly, he, he had intimate relationship with the Father, because we see that Jesus say that, whatever you see me do on this earth, I do not do anything without what I see the Father do. Whatever the Father said or done is what I'm doing it on this earth. So John 8, 23 says that he said to them, you are from beneath, but I am from above. You are of this world. I am of this. I am not of this world. So Jesus, when he lived in this earthly life, as we study in Christology, that he was 100% man. And at the same time, he was 100% God. So when we are in Christ Jesus, we have the access of his wisdom, his grace, that we abide in him. What is in him becomes of us. So we get this grace to overcome the earthly things. So no situation on this earth that way God cannot handle it. When we abide in him and he abides in us, he gives us the grace, he gives us the ability to overcome that situation. Why? Because we are born from above through Christ Jesus. So we need to live our life spiritual, even when we are in natural. How? Intentionally. We need to do the thing that pleases God. So intentionally, you put it in practice so that we walk on earth with a heavenly anointing upon us. So we grow and we learn to live a life that pleases God, that pleases God from above. So this does not happen automatically. It is intentionally that we need to lead our life that pleases God, the spirit and natural life of a believer. We see. We are on page 114, which gives a, uh, uh, the truth, a contrast, a uh, uh, apparent paradox about these two, that both are true at the same time. How we can walk naturally being heavenly minded. So here we see the first one that we need to know is we are complete in Christ Jesus. Are we made righteous in Christ Jesus? The same way we are complete in Christ Jesus. But at the same time, we are work in progress when it comes to our fleshy desire. Do we sin? Do we repent? Do we set things right with God? So we are work in progress. We are a new creation. We are complete in Christ Jesus. At the same time, there are certain areas we see that it needs to be changed, isn't it? We are growing. We are growing from strength to strength, glory to glory, isn't it? Now, next we see, yes, we are perfected in Christ. At the same time, we are yet to be perfect in our nature, isn't it? In our human nature. The same way we are sanctified in Christ Jesus. But in our human nature, we are yet to be satisfied. What, what, what does it mean? That means every minute, we are dependent on Christ. If you look at us, we see us in which we see our weakness, we see our unworthiness. But the minute when we see ourselves in Christ, then we see ourselves, yes, we can overcome this. We are cleansed by God. We are sanctified in Him because we see the free work of Christ Jesus on the cross. When we look at that. When we look at ourselves in nature, we see, yes, Lord, thank you that you have died on the cross and you have sanctified me. I can look at myself in you, that I am in you. So we set focus not over ourselves, but we set focus in Christ Jesus. And when we say that we are hidden in Christ, yet in natural, we are visible, isn't it? I can see you, y'all can see me. We are visible. But we know in spiritual, 
at the same time though i am visible in natural but at the same time i know in spiritual i am hidden in christ jesus the enemy has no access over me uh huh no i am in christ that's the truth i identify myself in christ jesus that's the truth you may not look at look jesus in me right now you will look at myself dina here but i know spiritually the enemy cannot look at me the enemy sees jesus in me because i'm hidden in christ jesus because the scripture says or will not spare because we are the apple of his eyes and he will not spare if anyone tries to touch this apple and he keeps us promise when god says that you are hidden in christ no enemy can touch you because you are hidden in him we are new creation when we call ourselves new creation has anything changed color hair height weight no we are the same but in spirit we are new our mind is renewed our spirit person is renewed okay but in natural we are renewing isn't it every time we fall we renew our mind but then the truth is i am a newborn i am a new creation so we set our mind on that and we get ourselves work in progress to reach that new creation we are righteous yet we repent isn't it why because we are in Christ Jesus to the enemy we saying we have been made righteous because the righteousness of god is in us but at the same time when we do wrong the spirit of the lord who lives in us as he tells as he warns us hey dina you made a mistake go apologize apologize to god say sorry repent and also fix your problem with the person around you and we being in christ we are obedient to his voice we act upon what has been instructed to us by the spirit person within us why because we are righteousness in christ jesus next point is raised with new life yet to be crucified we need to believe in this we are a new being we have been raised in new life so every time you face a persecution you face a, a suffering you have to sacrifice certain things be ready to do it because this scripture says when you die in christ you have been resurrected in christ jesus now it may not uh, denote the physical death actually but dying to ourselves dying to ourselves because jesus died on the cross he's been raised high he's been seated in the most high position the right hand of god and you and i can handle any situation because christ is in us he has conquered every situation so we can handle this situation with a renewed mindset so possessing it we press on we are blessed with all spiritual blessing that is given to each of us freely that we can overcome every situation because we are pressing on towards a most high goal we set our goal on god and we press towards it when we press towards it when we lead our life keeping our goal our vision in mind we do that because we have the spirit of the lord who is pressing within us saying that i am with you you are not alone i am the strength within you and you can do it the not giving up attitude is from god that each of us have it within us so the scripture also says we are resting but at the same time we are laboring we call to be the labor isn't it last class we studied about how the labor in the lord is not in vain though we are laboring we are laboring from the point of resting we don't get tired in doing what god has called to do because that's become our passion 
that's become our life, our new lifestyle, our interest, everything. That's what we see in Apostle Paul, isn't it? Even though he was stoned to death and dragged out of the city, next day, he, you know, he, he got up from that and he walked to a different place, to Derby, to minister and share the gospel. And he's a man who lived in the flesh. So he would have had every pain that would have caused out of stoning to death. There may be bruises, that there may be bruises that was bleeding. We don't know how he limped or dragged himself to walk and stand up on his feet, but here he marched to another city. It says, the scripture clearly says that he walked to another city. So from where did this passion come from? From where this uh, attitude to labor come from? from the place of rest. Do you think, uh, don't you think like the ministers, the apostles who were with Apostle Paul would not have said, Apostle Paul, you rest for some time. You were just stoned to death. You're bruised. You're bleeding. Why don't you rest and continue your journey once you're better? I'm sure as they prayed for him, they would have also advised him. But what would have Apostle Paul would have replied for that? Apostle Paul would have said, though it's not there in the scripture, I'm just saying with the attitude, with the nature of Apostle Paul, I'm sure you would have said, I have the eternity for resting. But when I'm here, let me do what God has asked me to do. So what is making him, what is driving him to labor beyond his ability? Is the love for Christ love for Christ. His time is short on this earth, isn't it? Just like Apostle Paul, when our time is limited, it's short on this earth. So God is asking, with the time frame that I have given to each of you, how are we laboring in Christ Jesus? How are we laboring in Christ Jesus? So as I uh, put forth this question, I'm also asking myself, how am I laboring in Christ Jesus? Because the work of God is so much. When we have this mind of Christ, can we ask ourselves, can we question ourselves, can God's work wait? Can God's work wait? Did Apostle Paul said, OK, fine, I'm hurt. I'm not well. I've been bruised, bleeding. Let me wait. Let me tarry in this place. Later, I can go to Derby and share the word of God. Did he do that? We have never read anything like that in the Gospels or in the Book of Acts, that any of the apostles who wait. Tony says that they waited for the Holy Spirit to come upon them. It never said that they waited for them to be healed. They waited for them. They waited for them to be released from the prison. Never said anything like that. The scripture in fact says that they praised God in the prison, they rejoiced in the prison. They rejoiced in their persecution. It only shows that nothing stopped the work of God. So what does it mean? Why is it recorded in the scripture for you and I to carry the same attitude within us? We should come to a position that we don't blame anything, anyone, any circumstances from us serving God, from doing what God is called to do. We should not be in a position of telling God, like, God, you gave me only one talent. I kept it safe here. I'm returning it back to you. God is saying that I've given you enough. See what you can do with what you have received. So we are responsible. We are accountable to what we have in hand. So this is what it is. And the power of living from above. That's what we need to renew our mind. When our thought process is renewed, when we have this heavenly call in us, so in our earthly, in our, in our natural man, we can walk in Christ Jesus. We can walk with that heavenly call, keeping in mind how? By renewing our mind. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 to 24 says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So we need to focus on this renewed man because the renewed man carries the righteousness and holiness of Christ Jesus. And also in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, I'm reading verse 2, talks about, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How do we live a transformed life? How did Apostle Paul do what he did? Yes, by renewing our mind. Physically, he was weak. Physically, he was dragging himself. But because he was strong in his mind, he renewed his mind, he could do what he did. So today, God is asking us, calling us, can we renew our mind that we can go beyond our ability, that we can go beyond our strength to serve him? So this shows that we need to have a strong attitude within us. We cannot say that, oh, I'm very tired. I served last night. I was awake till 12 o'clock that I cannot come. I cannot come to the ministry. I cannot come and serve. I cannot preach. No. If we are the minister of God, our attitude should change. For now, as students, we all are serving. We see ourselves serve on Saturday doing the setup, studying, working, assignment. Still, next day morning, 6 o'clock, we are ready to serve in the church, aren't we? So are you guys seeing that something that has been trained and implemented in the college? This is the training ground, and it is a hard ground that we train you all on so that you're prepared when you go on the ministry field. There's nothing that can hold you back. Nothing that can hold you back. The learning that you started now is for lifelong. The work that you started now is for lifelong. The attitude that you carry here in the college is trained, is built up in a very hard way for us to carry it lifelong. I never allow anyone, if you're not, I say, OK, take medicine, rest, see to it that you're back to class. Why? We are training ourselves hard. I know we need rest, but we are training yourself to rely on the Most High God. We are training you to depend on Him, on the strength in Him that we can draw. If I give the liberty, say, OK, fine, rest, get well, take rest for two days, three days, who's losing? Am I training you to be a warrior? Am I training you to be a warrior? Can you relax like that when you are out on the field? No. God is asking us to be diligent, to be vigilant, to be watchful, to be strong. He is calling us to be a warrior. For that, we are preparing you. We should not compromise on the call that God has called each of us. We should set a focus on the call that God has called us. Distraction may be high. But then you make a mind. You choose, no, I decide to sacrifice everything because the price that I have to pay for the call that God has called me is much higher. It's much higher. And I will not compromise that. I don't decide or I don't will to compromise on that because I want to be where God wants me to be. So we are partnering with the Most High God. That's why we are the ambassadors of Christ Jesus. That's why we are the ministers of the Most High God. We have a reward. We have a life eternal to rest, to enjoy, to do what we wanted. But right now, we are laboring in Christ Jesus, where we don't give rest to ourselves, but we do what he has called us to do. With that, I end this session. And let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, I pray that I need this attitude 
to be in me. I want this renewed mind that I have to be renewed in every area. That the call of God becomes the major, main focus. And I'm ready to sacrifice every other thing. Lord, I thank you for renewing this warrior spirit within me that I, I labor in Christ Jesus, that I do not give heed to any of the physical weakness or the uh, physical um, uh, fleshly wanting, but then I set my mind on Christ Jesus. Father God, Spirit of the Lord, I pray that you move among us. You minister to each of us and you strengthen each of us in our weakness, that we may strengthen that we may be strengthened, we may set our focus on the call that you have called us, because the work of God should not tarry. Lord, as you said, that you will raise the leaders to be the imitators of Christ. Lord, I pray that you will raise each of us here, Lord, to be the imitators of Christ Jesus, so that we may labor well in the call in the journey that you have called for thank you lord that you have strengthening us with the spirit of god that we, each of us will be strengthened will go beyond our ability beyond our strength to serve you, lord. being heavenly minded as we live on this earth lord. thank you father in jesus name we pray amen Thank you, each one, for joining in today's session. I hope it was a blessing. Thank you. Bless.